The infraspinatus muscle. The infraspinatus lies on the back of the scapula, just below the scapular spine. As part of the rotator cuff muscle group, one of the more critical functions of this muscle is to hold and stabilize the head of the humerus within the glenoid cavity during movement of the shoulder joint. Here are the landmarks for the infraspinatus. First we have the scapula, the spine of the scapula, the humerus, and the glenohumeral joint. Here's the origin of the infraspinatus muscle and the insertion here on the greater tubercle. Contraction of the infraspinatus muscle rotates the upper arm to the outside at the shoulder. The teres minor assists the infraspinatus during this motion, and the subscapularis and pectoralis major oppose the infraspinatus. Let's take a look at the clinical findings for the infraspinatus trigger points. Clients with active trigger points in the infraspinatus will typically complain of intense and deep pain in the anterior shoulder joint that they describe as deep joint pain. The pain can extend down the front of the arm and into the hand, and it may be felt along the inside border of the scapula and the back of the neck as well. They will describe an inability to reach behind their back, as in when they're trying to reach for their wallet in a back pocket or trying to fasten their bra. And they will also say they're unable to lay on either side while they're sleeping. Some factors that may activate and perpetuate trigger points in the infraspinatus include unusual movements such as reaching behind them to brace themselves from a fall, a car accident, or throwing a ball. Some trigger points that are associated with infraspinatus trigger points include the teres minor and supraspinatus trigger points. A common misdiagnosis for active infraspinatus trigger point includes rotator cuff terror or rotator cuff strain, bicipital tendonitis, C5, C6, and C7 radiculopathy, scapulohumeral syndrome, and glenohumeral arthritis.